Thank you everybody for coming this evening. My name is Catherine Henry and I'm the art docent chair for the PTSA at Lake Wilderness. And for any of those who have volunteered with any of the other elementary schools within the district of Tahoma, a lot of us use the Green River Community Program. And we used to as well at Lake Wilderness, but we kind of found that we were running into the problem of prints were checked out by certain docents and others wanted to use them and they didn't have those resources available because the prints came on these big posters that we had to find places to store them. And if one person was using them, they weren't available for other people. So our program program is actually all digital and we'll kind of go through the program and if you have any questions please go ahead and raise your hand I'm going to try and figure out how to do comments and recording and and everything all at the same time if you didn't receive a pdf that looks like this which has little hand prints up in the corner and it says art docent information for this year then please email me and let me know so that I can get that to you because it has all the information with the links to the digital program that I'm going to be talking about this evening. Lake Wilderness, we came up with our own curriculum and basically all that is is it's a, a digital lesson and then there's an art project to go with it and I'll show you those slides as we go through them and where they're available. And we have a four-year rotating program where it covers art through the ages, which is the errors of art, which is this year, and then the artists and kind of a focus on who's behind the art. And I will show you our page here where you can find that. So this is our Google Drive and that's the link to that is at the bottom of this page here. And the Google Drive, you can see where it says for your art curriculum. And if you click on it, then you can see by artist, by the elements and principles of art, and you can also see by the errors of art. And that's what we're going to be focusing on this year's. So if we click on them, you'll be able to see all the PDFs here down at the bottom. And this first one, if you click on it, it'll take you to slides that show you every single error. And I'm gonna actually pull it up on my PDF you can download all of these. They're shareable. You can share links. You can send them directly to the teacher and say, this is what I'd like to do this month. And you'll be able to see that you can just scroll down. Well, it's not wanting to let me. We'll try it on this one. Okay, there we go. So you'll see that we kind of start in the prehistoric stone age. Each one of these slides that you see comes with a corresponding lesson. So this lesson right here, if you wanted to do a prehistoric stone age lesson, you could go back and you can see it right here. So these are all in order. So every slide that you see here has a corresponding lesson right here. And these are the PDFs that you can use. And each lesson contains a slide that gives information about the era of art and things that you might see. So for example, for the Stone Age, you see pictographs and petroglyphs. There are very basic colors and you talk a little bit about that with the students. And then you can show them examples. And then after the lesson, which is about 10 minutes, you can then skip straight to your grades level art project. So this is the preschool and kindergarten project. Some of them are combined. So like sometimes we'll do like a fourth or fifth grade project if it involves a little bit more skill. And you can see an example, or you can go to your first, second grade, third, fourth, or the fifth grade. And so each one of these lessons that are done by grade level get a little bit more complex. So this is one that I did with some of the students. And this one you can see is a little bit more advanced. It's got a lot of color to it. You can also see that there's, I challenged the students to do more of a storyline with this one. And so they used their different shapes, very basic to explain whatever storyline that they had come up with. So that was a fifth grade lesson, whereas our, younger grade level with just a very basic 
square cow. And this is this brown paper bag that we just had them crumple up to create kind of a stone. And then we opened them back up and we had them rub a chalk on it so that it had the different texture and it, it brought it out. So that might be a little bit more advanced. So you can see how these projects, they can be very basic or they can be increased to create more uh, difficulty for the kids that have a greater skill level. So each one of these lessons here. So this is back to the long PDF that has every error of art. And so we go all the way through. Now there are 23 slides on this PDF that go through everything from golden age and romanticism. We even have Asian art the Renaissance, which I like to get the kids to connect with by talking about the Ninja Turtles. The Ninja Turtles were named after the main artist and the kids get really excited about that. So if you can find some sort of common ground for the kids to get excited, then it really helps them to connect with the lesson and be able to retain that information. Anyway, so it goes all the way through the eras of art. And like I said, this is um, just the art through the ages and next year we'll do artists and then elements of art and principles of art but we still want you to kind of tie in an element or principle of art with each lesson so with this one they were beetles from the Egyptian era but you can see the different colors we talked about shading and how to shade the green into the blue and I gave them the challenge that they could do a cool colored beetle or a warm colored beetle. And so that is just one way to kind of apply one of those elements or principles of art. And all these different things that I am showing you are found on the Art Docent Google Drive. So these are the elements of art and it just gives a basic overview of what a line is or a value, space texture. That's a really fun one to be able to explain how to do texture and how it plays a role in art. And then these are the principles of art. So those are all found within Google Drive. Now I've also provided you with the PowerPoints for each one of these PDFs. So if you see something in it that you want to use, but you don't necessarily want to use the whole program, you just go in and you, you find the PowerPoint that you want to use, you can download it and feel free to, to dissect it and, and do whatever you need to with it. The whole point of these lessons was so that volunteers who wanted to volunteer but didn't have the time to be a docent had the materials and the lessons already at hand, ready to go. You just email it to the teacher. I like to do it the day before kind of as a reminder, hey, this is for a lesson tomorrow at 12 o'clock. And um, it's a good reminder for the teacher. And then the teacher has it right there on hand to be able to just open it up. So the teachers on their side, they have computers that are hooked to projectors and those projectors then show onto their whiteboard. So you can actually draw over and show the kids how to do certain, like if you're trying to get the kids to learn how to do, uh, draw a camel, you could put this up and you can draw on the whiteboard and show them how the shapes can start to connect and make an animal. I, I do a lot of writing and arrows and everything to help the kids kind of see, or I'll come in and, and do, you know, like draw a hat on the, the camel or something like that. It just gets them interactive with what you're doing and what you're explaining. So those whiteboards are really great. They've got markers, erasers, everything that you need there. And if you don't want to use any of these lessons or PowerPoints, that's totally fine. You can create your own. Again, we just ask that they follow along with what we're doing this year and make sure that you cover one of those elements or principles of art. But this is a really great way that if you're not sure what to do, it's already there for you. I am always available for you to email me. And even if it's sort of like, I have this art project, what era would you tie it into and, and how would you do this? And this is actually just a magazine that the child cut out and put onto a backer. And then they tore out a sheet of paper and glued it to the picture. And then they had to fill in the blank. They kind of had to draw their own. So this was just a plain basketball hoop and this, student chose to have a cat 
batting the basketball away. So we've got all sorts of fun materials in the closet. And if you don't see one that you would like, uh, again, email me. I just had a docent recently email me and ask if we had a certain supply. And I didn't even know they made these supplies. So I went ahead and ordered those and those will be coming in. But we have a budget and we, I would love to hear your ideas for supplies. Otherwise, I just kind of basically uh, restock the supplies. If there's one that you see that's running low that I've just missed, again, feel free to email me and, and let me know. But I'm happy to help you in your, with your lessons in any way. I've already had a number of docents do that this year. So with the lessons, it's a 10-minute lesson about, right? You can do 10 minutes with the older kids and be pretty good about filling that whole time, whereas your preschool age kids might get start to get a little bit antsy after five minutes. Um, so you just kind of have to read the room. But I usually allot 10 minutes for the lesson and 40 minutes for the project itself and then about 10 minutes for cleanup. We ask that you stay in the classroom for only an hour unless the teacher gives you more time. Um, I've had teachers say, oh, they're having so much fun and this goes along with what we're doing next, so let's keep going, let's let them finish. I always try and make sure that the project is one that they can finish within the 40 minutes. If it takes me an hour and a half to do, the kids will not be able to do it in their 40 minutes. So I try and throw together a project and if I can do it in about 20 minutes or so, then the kids will be able to manage fitting that project in that 40 minutes. And we, we want those projects to be completed because nothing is worse than feeling like you didn't have enough time to complete your project and seeing other kids with completed projects but yours was not. So yeah, when in doubt, keep it simple. You do need to be cleared by the district. That's something that you go on, you fill out their application and that application is one that will last a few years. I think they're currently doing it every two to four years. And they're really great about sending you an email and saying, hey, it's time to renew your application. And they'll send an email for both the renewal and when it gets accepted, they'll send that as well. I did mention Green River Community College. Occasionally we'll buy one of their half memberships, which they will then, um, will be able to go to Green River campus and do art classes where they teach you like anything you wanted to know about watercolor or oil pastels. So if there's an art supply that you didn't know how to use, they teach you how to do that. This year they did not offer that, so we just don't have a membership with them. But we're hoping that next year they offer that and they offer like a full day of classes called Projects, Projects, Projects. It's sort of like speed dating, but for art, where they have 10 minute lessons and you just go around all day long and then there's a break for lunch and then you come back and do more 10 minute lessons. And so you walk away from the class with like a whole handful of projects that pretty much cover the entire year of projects now that you have to take into the classroom. So hopefully we'll get to do that next year. Sadly, not this year though. If you want to make a portfolio for the kids, that's fine. We've had docents ask that in the past that they can create like a little portfolio and the student's art goes in there. Sometimes the teacher has a place for that to go in the classroom and be stored, but a lot of the times the teachers are tight on space. So unless you want to store it at home, we encourage you to send the artwork home with the students when they're done. When the kids get to take their artwork home, they get excited about it. They tell their parents about it. When you explain explain what you've learned, you actually retain that information more. So talking about the artwork, when you finish an art class, there's a board that your teacher has been assigned in the hallway and you can go out and you can hang up the art. And then, so the first class, they never go home with the art because they haven't made anything before. But the second art class, so say they make this, this goes up onto the board and then next week they make their beetles. So then I send this home with them and then they hang their beetles up on the board. So it's, it's got about a month of getting to see the art up in the hallway. And you can choose to hang your art any way you want. I prefer to hang like a big piece of paper and then put the student's name in the corner and then 
they can just come out and there's paper clips on the top and they just come out and they just stick their paper up wherever their name is when they're done. And then they can pull down their old, old artwork and they take it home. And then that way the, the kids are actually hanging their artwork on their own. If the teacher doesn't want kids coming in and out of the classroom, that's fine. I just have them stack them on the side right by the door. And then I go do that afterwards and change everything out and then bring the old artwork back into the classroom and set it on the back table. And then that way the kids can come and get it and put it in their backpacks or their cubbies when they need it. Going back to the lesson, we talked a little bit about getting the kids to connect with the artwork. And like I said, Renaissance, you've got the Ninja Turtles you can refer to. One of the ones that I really enjoy referring to is the air of favorism, which is right here. It's actually a French word. And this is really cool. I'm going to jump to the, the slide that explains it. It's very colorful. But this is one I always like to do with the kids because favorism actually comes from the French word les favors, which means wild beast or wild cats. And since we are the wild cats, the kids always get really excited to do that. We did watercolors with this. And this was one where I actually drew the eyes. And then for the younger kids, they just put blobs of watercolor and then they blew it around with a straw to make their texture and make it feel like the the wild cat was looking in a puddle and seeing its reflection. So that's a really great, easy way to make it for younger kids. For the maybe second or third grade, they could draw their own eyes and fill them in. This was a different perspective of cat, which we did for the fifth graders. So you're still seeing that favorism, air, very colorful art, but they're still, and they're still getting their wild cat. So sometimes this is, the bonus project that you see with this air, but there's still the very basic projects that you can do that cover this air. And it's really fun. I actually go, I, I created these and I forget. I was like, oh, I remember that project. That's so cool. Okay. Cause it's been four years. So I started doing challenges with each of the projects because you'll have some kids who are very, very talented and they understand an art lesson very well and they just go for it, right? They're already doing the project before you've completed talking about it. So I try and put like the how to's, that's the basic of how to do this lesson and maybe a student needs a challenge. So if they come to you and they're like, or you know that they need that extra challenge, you can go to them and say, here's the challenge for the art project today. And that allows them to add more onto it. So if they complete their project fast and they say, now what do I do? You can say, how about you try the challenge? So some of the projects have that, others do not. It just kind of depends on what the project was and how easy it was to add a challenge onto it. But again, we're trying to get every child to have some sort of completed project that they can then show up in the hallways. So we had a question last meeting about having kind of like an assistant. So having two docents and having an assistant come back in. And originally they said just one docent per classroom, but they said as long as we can respect the six feet within the classroom and, and staying away from students, then we can have more than one docent, which makes it really great because you can have one main teacher teaching the lesson and kind of an assistant helping with materials or going around and asking questions. And there's a number of ways to pass out materials. My favorite is the buffet style where you just lay everything out on the back table. And then you say this table group or this row, you go grab your supplies. And I mix it up so that everybody gets a chance to kind of go first and get their supplies. Because of COVID, we're trying to make sure that each student has their own supplies. So we've ordered a few more watercolor pads and things like that where they won't have to share. If they do have to share, that's okay, but we have tried to supply enough materials to be able to have individual water cups and individual paintbrushes and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and move on to our resources. So this is our number one resource. This Lake Wilderness Art Docent resource on the Google Drive. You can see right here the elements and principles of art Actually, I'm going to click on this and show you this. This is really neat. So past this page, you have 
the elements and principles of art and kind of where your grade is. So if I'm kindergarten, this is where my kindergartner class should be with understanding what a line is. So understanding what a line is for a kindergartner is going to be very different than what understanding what a line is for a fifth grader. And so this PDF on the home page, when you click on that link, is really fantastic with making sure that what you're teaching your grade level actually coincides with what their skill level, what they'll be able to understand and learn. We also have these other where it's an art medium technique, which does have a little bit about what we were talking about with the Green River, where it says kind of basic watercolor, understanding of temper paint. There's a, a clay how-to. And we don't typically store clay in the closet just because of space, but if you do want to do clay, just reach out to me and let me know. I'm going to ask for a month this year, maybe a month in advance because of shipping issues with supplies. And I will pretty much order it immediately if we're able to do so and make sure it gets to you. We also have art walk boards. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the art option. The way we fund all the supplies for art is that we hold an art auction. And that art auction is basically come February or March, instead of doing an individual lesson where each child makes one of their own pieces of artwork to hang on the board outside, they create a project that's collaborative that they can put on some sort of canvas or together. So these are a bunch of sea turtles that the docent had just given a black sheet of paper and they talked about kind of pixelism and how dot can form a picture and each student made their own turtle and she actually had to make two turtles, one on each side of the page. They got to keep a turtle to take home right away and then the other turtle was part of this collaborative piece and she just painted the canvas black and then mosh poshed the pieces on. And then it was an item that we sold at auction. So each classroom will get to do that. And then during the celebration of learning, which is at the end of the year where the parents get to come in and see what their students have been working on for the whole year, we have this auction in the gym and the parents can come and bid on the pieces. And it's always really exciting. Um, to get to see all the artwork laid out and, and what the students have been working on. And the, if you don't uh, get a chance to win the bid on the original, I actually make prints and those prints we sell as well. So you can get an eight by 10 print for framing. Their Costco photos, they're really nice. And so that's kind of what the art auction is. Part of that art auction is we try to also line the halls with art. And if you're doing your art board throughout the year, you're kind of already done. The only thing that we ask you to do with the art walk boards is that you make sure your child's name is somewhere on, on the artwork. And every year, so this was a very, overall a very simple one where they had done ice cream scoops and then the child wrote their name down at the bottom and then this doesn't had created kind of like an ice cream parlor look. So we host a art walk contest where the docents have a chance to win a gift card to somewhere within the community for best board. And so you do not have to participate. It's completely optional. So these were some of the boards the docents put together to make just a celebration of learning a special night for everybody. You can put staples on the board. You can put command hooks. We cannot put nails. Oh, we can do thumbtacks, but not nails. Anyway, so there are a ton of resources here. We've got past art projects in there by the years, and you can see what different projects people have done. And I will hold a training geared specifically for this that are with tips and tricks about how to do these projects, what mediums work best, how to do a collaborative project and get everything onto one canvas or in one frame. But I just wanted to let you know that it is there in case you wanted to look at it. All right, so I've got that resource. The next one on the list, I'm just going down the list of our PDF here. The next one is Deep Space Sparkle. 
and she has just so many projects and the projects um some of them come with printables that you can print out and just take it into the classroom and she will tell you like you can see this light lesson about ghosts she ties them all in you can see the categories we're talking about line drawings this was a pre-k art lesson for the fall and it took them about 30 minutes to do the lesson and this the one right next to it that one was first grade and it took 60 minutes so maybe 60 minute project might not work for first graders but you could get it down to the 40 minutes if you brought it into fifth graders or you pull back a few items because it looks like she's got a lot going on in this project so maybe if you just pulled the pumpkin from it and the vines and left off the space in the background with the stars and the moon it would simplify it so she's really fantastic Green River Community College, they have an art docent Pinterest page. And you will notice on the PDF that I say, please no Pinterest crafts. The difference between a Pinterest craft and a, an art docent project is that you can tie an element or principle of art into it. So we do use Pinterest. You'll actually see that our page on Pinterest has a lot of ideas. The Green River focuses a lot on the artists but if you know Van Gogh was this heir and I want to do a project from him, then you can come and you can click on his projects and it gives you a whole list of different lesson ideas for that, as well as projects that you can do. So our Pinterest page is broken down more for what our program is with the four-year rotating. And you have projects by elements, you have projects by grades, you have projects by artists, by the errors of art down here. We even did the wildcat projects where um, one February we did everything wildcats on the principal's request. And so the kids came through and the entire walls were lined with wildcats that year and during the month of February. So we created a board for that. So I will add pins and projects and things like that as they are asked. We even have a Black History Month and I'm going to start doing other things like Indigenous people. So we're going to start creating more of those as well. All right, so the last resource that we've got, this is also new this year. If you want to see how an art lesson is taught, we have our own art channel and you can see that there's an art lesson example here. It's almost pretty much exactly 10 minutes and you can kind of just see how she talks and interacts with the, the first graders. You have a lot of, with the younger kids, a lot of hands going up in the air and be like, I remember a time when it had nothing to do with the lesson too much, but the kids are creating those, you know, if you can bring it back and get them to connect with the lesson, then that's great. So you'll kind of see that a few times in this lesson and that's fantastic. Uh, sometimes it's really hard to reel the kids back in and get them back onto the project, but she does a fantastic job at the end of doing the lesson and then explaining the project and having the kids go back through the steps with her. And that's great for the younger kids to have them repeat the step. The biggest problem they have is getting their name on their artwork for whatever reason. So that is always something I say, take your, take, take your paper, put your name on it, now flip it over because then they don't paint over their name or, or whatever it is. So the next one is the art closet walkthrough. And I would highly recommend that you go walk that so you can see where our key is, where the different supplies are. I know I run through that really fast, but you can pause and kind of see, and I've done some arrows post-production so you can kind of see where things are that I wasn't able to point out or I forgot to during the lesson. We've got two fold out carts that are, when you walk in the door, they're right off to your left and those carts fold open and you're able to put art supplies on them and wheel them to the classroom. We also have big tubs that you can put, you know, your supplies in and then put on the cart or just carry the tub to your classroom. And if you have a classroom on the second floor, if you, when you check into the front office, then you would just need to ask for an elevator key. And it's just a key that you kind of tap on a pad and the elevator will come down and then just turn it back in at the end of your lesson. So those are our resources. If you know anybody who's interested in the program but kind of wants to know more before 
signing up. That's what this third video is for. You're more than welcome to share that with them. It's got a lot of information. Even watching it after doing this might help remind you of some of the things we've talked about. The art closet code is in that PDF, and I'm not going to share that with you verbally tonight just because this will be going online. But if you need that, reach out to me. You do have to press the code in, and there's a little arrow button down that you press down and it opens up, and then you have to put the code back in before you can shut it. It requires the code to open and to close it. I don't know why, that's just how they created it. We've got these wonderful resources. And again, I'm always available to help out. Just an email away. I try and get back to you as soon as possible. Usually about a day is kind of my turnover time with the emails. So we do have to share the art closet. It's actually the PTSA closet. And we do share it with the whole of the PTSA. And we try and keep it as clean as possible and keep the calendars as clean as possible. So you guys can pop in and do a quick art lesson, prep and make your own example if you wanted to go that route. But we're, we're a shared closet. So I've gone in there and it looks like a bomb has exploded with, um, you know, drying sponges and, and paintbrushes, especially when we are getting ready to have like the Harvest Festival or art auction or a holiday breakfast, all of those events, there tends to be a lot more in the closet. So I tend to like to do my lessons not around those times. And so talking about kind of when to do a lesson, another easy way to schedule a lesson is to ask the teacher to come in at a certain regular time every month. So the first Wednesday of every month at 11 o'clock or the second Thursday of the month at noon. That way it's just a regular reoccurring event and then you might have to adjust for spring break or winter break or something like that. But the teachers are really great if you reach out and say, notice that we'll be out of school for this day. Can we move the lesson to this day? And they understand that life happens. Now that they're allowing another person to come in, I'm always happy to pop in and help assist or you can watch me teach a lesson if you need that extra hands-on and you could assist me and then that way you kind of see what it's about but I'm also happy to just come in and assist to make you guys feel comfortable and it sounds a lot scarier than it is and that's why I love this example of the art lesson because it shows that it's really easy and I think you are more scared than the kids and I've been doing this I think now for 12 years and I still get the jitters I don't know why and then I start teaching and it's totally fine like the kids love having you in the classroom and every once in a while you have that one child that kind of shuts down and doesn't want to do the art project and that's okay. You know, you can work around that sort of thing. Okay, so the last few things that I just wanted to cover is that there's a calendar on the back of the door and if you have an art supply that you want to have for a particular day and there's not a ton of them, like we have enough watercolors now for uh, two whole classes to have them out at the same time. So if you've got 30 students and you can gather 30 of the watercolor kits and there's still enough for another class to have. But I would recommend that you go and you write just the time. Like if I need those watercolors at 11 o'clock, write it on the calendar. And then that way, if another docent is trying to plan their project, then they know, hey, watercolors are out at 11. They should be back about 1230, right? Because an hour lesson and about 30 minutes to get those supplies back into the closet is what I typically do. And that way you just make sure that when you come in and you're focused on doing watercolor cats and you get there and you've got your pads, nothing's worse than coming in and that supply is gone. So we created that calendar to solve that problem and it's worked really, really great in the past. We also have butcher paper, which is the big, big roll on carts that are located in the storage closet on each level. I talk about that more in the art closet video and you can just use a key and take whatever paper you need and then just make sure the key gets put back up into the closet because we only have one. And then we also have watercolor pads, which you'll see in that in the video as well. And those watercolor pads, we just ask that you write your name, check out each class gets two pads this year. And if we have extra funds towards the end of the year, I'll send out an email and say, hey, everybody gets a third pad. 
but we just want to make sure everybody at least gets the the one or two pads that they want because watercolor paper actually takes up quite a bit of our budget because we buy a higher quality watercolor paper so you don't get the pilling and the things like that all right so i normally do a project with my art docents at the end of training and that way you guys just kind of have something to take home since we can't do that this year i'm just going to hold stuff up so this is a project that i did for surrealism and if you know salvador dolly he loves his melted clocks and his crazy animal long legs and so what this project was is i simply had the students draw an outline of a crazy shape on their piece of paper and then they traced and drew a bare minimum of what their favorite animal was doing something that they love to do we had dogs kicking soccer balls i paraglide and so i did a flying squirrel paragliding and then we had these clear paper plastics that we put over and then i just had the kids trace the outline that they had drawn on their paper I had them trace it in permanent marker and we kept it pretty simple. So afterwards, they then went around and they put their numbers on their clock and then they gave them a little brad and they put their clock hands. And then we actually had them take this portion over when they were done and they put it on a cookie sheet and we had a heat gun that they heated it up and it curled. Now, I didn't do that with mine because it would be very difficult to show you guys this with having done that. So then they were able to hang these melted clocks on the wall in the hall and they were really neat. We ended up putting a little hole punch at the top and we had to do a ribbon because they were so warped. But it was a really neat project that the kids absolutely loved. And this was definitely one that I couldn't have done without an assistant because as I was helping students move from this step to this step to putting the brads on, it was a lot of steps. So. I had somebody at the back room who was assisting me and she helped them put their brads on and then she helped them heat up their plastic to create the melted clock. So that's kind of an example. We talked about surrealism and how it's a dreamlike state. We talked about some of the different artists from that era and I kind of focused on Salvador Dali because he's like my favorite artist of all time. I love his stuff. And then this was the project that went along with it. All right. So I think the only thing that I'd like to encourage you guys to do is that the kids go to school and they're, they're told, this is how you do math. This is how you need to do English. This is how you need to do. So while I give my students steps to do things, I had a student who said, I don't have a favorite animal. Can I just draw myself playing soccer? Sure. He got the point, right? The point was talking about surrealism and we talked about lines in this one and how lines and shape and form, right? So you have like the form of the clock. The important part was he understood about the form and he understood about surrealism, not that he drew his favorite animal. And that's okay, as long as they're kind of following the lesson that you've taught, it's okay. I actually hated art. I hated art all the way until about seventh grade. When I had a teacher who was having us draw our favorite animal, and I said, I don't want to draw my favorite animal. Can I create a paper mache animal? And she said, sure, as long as you are focusing on those skills that we've talked about. So I made a duck. Looking at it now with my artist eye, years later, I'm like, oh, this is a really rough duck. But I spent hours on this duck and I ended up giving it to my mom as a gift. And when they downsized, she gave it back to me. And I'm just like, and it's on my desk. It sits on top of my desk to remind me that you have no idea where a child will go with their artwork. I want our lessons to be fun. I want them to be something that the kids get excited about and that they want to give to their parents for Christmas or for a birthday or something. And I want the children to be smiling and not to have tears. So if it's as simple as just letting them know they can do something a little bit different, that's okay. I am so appreciative of every volunteer that volunteers are time to come into the classroom because this is a fantastic program. I know art became my escape. It still is in my life today. And while I'm better at some mediums than others, um, like I've given up paper machine, 
but I, I do a lot of other art and that has stuck with me and it's so therapeutic. And those are the takeaways that we want the kids to have. We want them to get excited about hearing the name Salvador Dali and the curly mustache and going, oh, you know, and, or seeing a project that they've done in the hallway and feeling proud about, look what I was able to accomplish. And those are our goals with this program. And I appreciate everybody who is here this evening and who volunteers because we really can't do it without you guys.